Hello there, thank you for joining us today. We are going to look at specific Power Automate actions which are related to SQL Server. So if I click here under action in a, in a flow and search for SQL Server, then I can see some possibilities here like delete a row, execute SQL query, execute stored procedure, get rows, transform data, get tables. So all these options uh, uh, require premium license and uh, basically that's how you can uh, establish connection with SQL Server and trigger some things from your Power Automate flow in uh, SQL Server to retrieve some data or to update, uh, write some data there. So first, probably the most useful one will be execute SQL query. But the thing is, for that, if you look at it, right, you have to have tables already created in your SQL instance. So uh, let's see if I just remove, I have a couple of test actions already created. Uh, let me show you before we actually start using that what information has to be available. So one thing is uh, you see I have a connection here and to establish that connection I have to know the database name and the database server and also, also my firewall has to be opened. Uh, so if I add a new connection Right, I can use SQL authentication. In here, I would provide the SQL server name, SQL database, username will be my SQL user and the password for this user. Gateway, it's not needed if you're using Azure, but if you have on-premises uh, SQL instance, then you would uh, have an on-premises gateway. So let me go to Azure portal and show you a couple of things there. So here I'm in my Azure portal with my test subscription and test database, which is already created. You see here I have the server name and that's the information I would need to put into the Power Automate connection, right? And this would be the, the database name. And of course you would have a spe special user. So uh, first I would need to create a couple of tables. And so for that, I can open query editor and connect here with my user. But even before that, um, if I have some issues here, then I can set the server firewall. If I set the uh, server firewall, right, uh, I have to add my IP address and also later the Power Automate address when you establish a connection, if you get an error there, then you just specify this uh, IP. You can uh, add this uh, client or firewall rule to uh, add a specific IP to exceptions in your firewall, right? Uh, for, for your SQL server. So that's one thing you would do. Make sure your SQL server firewall is set correctly and also make sure you have a table created. So if I log in here using my uh, SQL server, right, I have already a couple of tables. If not, then I can just uh, find a query how to create a table and just uh, do something like this, right, to create a table uh, in using this uh, editor. Uh, I already ran this query, so I'm not going to do it one more time, but I have three tables in my SQL. Uh, and let me go back to the, uh, so here after I have the connection established, in my case I already have it established, uh, you see I can select the connection which one to run and I'm going to use this one and now I can specify what type of query to run. So here under options use the, the connection for the database you would also have this connection string, you know, connection settings. And for the query, I'm not an expert in SQL, but I know a simple query which selects everything from, from tables, right? So I have this query, it selects everything from tables. I save it 
and now I can uh, test the flow. I run this test manually, run the flow, and let's see what it does, if it actually works or not. So the query is executed. If I looked under outputs, right, you see I have my uh, table catalog schema and some uh, some databases which get retrieved. So uh, it seems to work. Uh, you see a couple of tables are here. So it seems to work fine. Uh, so that would be a starting point where you can start experimenting with um, uh, SQL connection. Just make sure your SQL allows inbound connection uh, from uh, Power Automate and you have the proper user, proper authentication and uh, tables in your SQL query, then you can start using it. So thanks for watching. I hope it's been helpful. Have a wonderful day. Bye bye.